center and then eventually when we get to it the summer seasonal help and when we did that we bolstered the lowest level of pay that we offer above minimum wage so I didn't have to bring back the wage ordinance to you all for the adjustment to minimum wage that was effective January 1st 2022 however I forgot that also at that October um, meeting when we passed this um, ordinance last, we added the prosecutor, the municipal prosecutor position to the, um, the pay scale. Years and years and years ago, it was on the part-time pay scale, and at some point in time, it fell off the pay scale. Um, and so we had been applying the elected officials pay increase to the municipal prosecutor pay increase. But the municipal prosecutor and the law director are two completely different positions within the city, um, and the municipal prosecutor is not elected. So um, so we needed to get it onto the pay scale. Well, when we <clears throat> didn't bring it back for an effective increase January 1st, I didn't have the opportunity to bring it back for an increase to the municipal prosecutor position. We don't need to adjust any of the other ones because we did um, kind of an overhaul back in October, um, but I did need to adjust that municipal prosecutor pay um, that is now contained within the ordinance. And I'm just still not used to it being in this ordinance because we just added it um, just a couple months ago. So I added it, brought it to you. That's why it's effective January 1st, 2022, so that it encompasses the year that we're actually in. And so that salary for the actual year is is a correct and approved by council for the, for the whole year. Um, I just applied a 2% increase, which is what all the non-union has been getting, what, um, what's in order with us um, annual elected officials, like the law director, the mayor, and myself. Um, so that explains that. Um, if there aren't any questions, um, or if there are any questions, afterwards I would ask that we suspend the report so we can get it approved and, uh, and not have to worry about it going forward with, uh, with the pay, Take it now. Take it going forward. Madam I move that we suspend the rule for a second. It has been moved and seconded. It has been moved by Mr. Sweet and seconded by Mr. Avalon. So rule four. Elder? Yes. Three? Yes. Five Yes. Sweet? Yes. Smith? Yes. Please. Yes. Who's put out? Has been moved to adopt by Mr. Elder and seconded by Mr. Yes. 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 Yes
First reading of an ordinance amending the personnel policy and procedure manual of the City of Fremont to include changes to Section 5.04 A3C and decline an emergency. Uh, this is actually a change of policy and procedure uh, manual that we would encourage to be made. Uh, this actually allows, uh, well, it's, it's similar to what every other municipality around us is doing. It allows a municipal employee from, say, Fostoria or another municipality to gain employment with the city of Fremont and come in procuring vacation at a rate of what their time was spent at the other municipalities. Meaning if I worked here in the city, of, or if I worked for Ottawa County for 10 years, the city of Fremont desires to hire me as the water treatment plan operator, I could then be offered vacation secured at the 10 year rate. It's not uncommon, it's actually a very common practice all around us. Uh, I firmly believe that uh, we have lost some very good candidates because we didn't have this in place and other municipalities did. I can tell you, I, I know for a fact that one person that flat out walked out of an interview because we didn't have this in place and everybody else did. And that way he would have been a really good candidate. So I would encourage you to suspend rule four on this. Uh, we do have some candidates that have municipal time. We're getting ready to start here very shortly. And we would like to uh, offer this benefit to them. And it's the same benefit that they would be getting if they would go through. This is going to apply to Anyone we want to hire? Anyone we want to hire? This would be, be our policy and procedure okay. manual. So, um, so yes, I, I can understand what you're getting There's at. No union issues? Uh, no, actually, uh, we've spoke with two of the unions, and they're they're 100 percent for it. Actually, the police union has something similar, like similar to this in their actual contract. So, uh, this is going to help us attract uh, employed, experienced employees into our city rather than discourage them from making that move. Right. Okay. It'll make us more competitive. Absolutely. And I would ask that we suspend the report because we're, we're, we're getting ready to hire. Make a motion to suspend the report. I second it. Okay. This is a motion by Mrs. Weeds and seconded by Mr. Sleek to suspend the report. Roll call. Sleek? Yes. I vote? Yes. No? Yes. Please? Yes. Owner? Yes. Three. yes. Move toward that. It has been moved to adopt by Mr. Sleek and seconded by no, Mr. Sleek. I mean, Smith. Mr. Smith. Kind of pull the side and look. There you go. That's right. I'm easily confused. Uh, roll call. Yes. Smith? Yes. Please? Yes. Louder? Yes. Freeze? Yes. Fiber? Yes. That has been passed by a, a vote of six to zero. Thank you. The next item on our agenda. First reading of an ordinance authorizing fund transfers in the amount of seventeen million two hundred and ninety seven thousand eight hundred and ninety five dollars and zero cents for fiscal year two thousand twenty two for the city of Fremont, State of Ohio and declaring an emergency. Madam President, pro tem, I'll just speak to this a little bit. This is just a separate authorization ordinance that we have to do every year. Um, the amounts mirror the amounts that were presented to council last year and approved in the 2022 budget. Um, but council's approval of the budget does not authorize the actual transfer of funds. So I always have to come back for separate authorization to actually um, move those funds. It's, it's in the high rise code. I can't just use your approval of the budget as authorization to do that. Um, but the amounts are all the same. Um, it's, uh, if there's any questions, it's our, it's our typical transfers. Um, the, uh, we're, we're transferred to the general fund, um, $8 million, half million dollars of capital improvements. Um, the biggest thing is probably we are transferring um, $550,000 out of the general fund and $550,000 out of the income tax fund for a total of $1.1 million that's going to go into our debt service fund. And that is going to be used to pay off the note that we've rolled over for a couple of years related to the garrison improvement project. So we financed it several years ago now with um, a note. 
Um, the first year that it was going to mature, we paid roughly half of it off um, with the amount of uh, that was part of the project for sewer. And then we rolled the street and the, and the water infrastructure into another note. And, um, and then this is, and then we rolled it one other time without paying any other down last summer. And so this summer we'll, we'll pay that off and we, uh, we won't have any more debt outstanding related to garrison, um, which will be a good thing. And then the other stuff in there is um, typical stuff, a transfer to the rec, uh, the rec department. Always, we're done paying on the debt um, related to the rec center. I believe last year was the last year that we had a debt payment for that. This is a separate transfer that helps um, essentially subsidize a little bit of the operations of the rec department um, and the rec center itself. And then, um, and then the I believe it's two seventy five, two hundred seventy five thousand dollars going into the uh, public safety equipment fund. So that's the fund that we're getting the fire truck out of this year. And then eventually, in a few years, we'll uh, we'll start rolling through the police department cruisers. And then another few years after that, we'll have another uh, another fire apparatus. So any questions about those transfers or anything? There's no real need to suspend Rule 4 if anybody felt like it. All it does is it just allows me to start transferring um, the dollars a little sooner. Um, if anything, it makes it a little odd because last year we started transferring it like in the month of March. And so when I give you my finance reports, the transfers, it's going to look like, oh, we're not transferring as much month to month. So the percentages are going to be a little goofy. Um, but uh, so there's no need. We can just do a reading. But um, with it being $17 million of transfers, I wanted to explain it, let you know that if you wanted to suspend Rule 4, you can. Uh, but if you wanted to let it go and let it go through the readings, that's fine, too. What's easier for you, Mr. Crow? It really doesn't matter. And if we don't need to suspend the rules, then I'd rather see cool. it go. Yep, okay. that's fine. Okay, we'll have that as a first reading then. We won't have any council reports unless there's somebody that has a report from their committee, Mr. Elder. Um, we'll, we will reschedule our LRO meeting um, for the next council meeting, February 3rd at 6:45, to address our to address our opening on the board of zoning appeals. Okay, so Mr. Elder has announced that there will be an LOR meeting at our next meeting and starts at 6:45. Okay. Thank you, Council. Uh, one thing I want to put on your radar, uh, members of council, hold on here, I'm looking up the section. Um, so, just to kind of update you on, on where we're at with some things. So, uh, there was an, uh, a recent article in the news messenger in reference to uh, law enforcement and the city struggling to find qualified police officers. Um, Ken Frost and I have, uh, we've been working on this pretty diligently over the last several weeks. Um, one of the things that Ken found when we were doing some homework in the uh, ORC session, um, because we're a statutory city, the statutory guidelines um, basically have a 35 year old age, maximum age that you can apply to be a police officer here in the city of Fremont. So if you're older than 35 years old, the way it stands today, you cannot apply to be here a police officer in the city. And uh, I uh, was doing some homework on this, reviewing the statute with Ken, and uh, we found that that, that statute is uh, allowed to be changed per the municipality through uh, your own ordinance, which um, I've asked, and from years past and I was told different and for some reason we just Ken and I got into the books and found uh, not that we were able to uh, articulate the law any different so we called Clement Nelson our HR consulting company and also checked with uh, the law director Mr. Melly who confirmed that we could in fact make that decision so um, what we did is uh, we made contact with the police chief and um, also uh, the, the captain of the police department and also the union reps of the police department. Although it's not their decision, we wanted them to be able to understand what we found um, because they've actually brought this to our attention in the past on why we can't, why can't we do this. So 
next council meeting, we're going to be bringing an ordinance to city council, and it's going to be the recommendation of the safety service director, myself, the police chief, and even the police union that we get rid of the age requirement. We don't believe that um, there should be an age requirement to uh, gain employment with the city of Fremont as a police officer. Um, we think by doing that, what that's going to do is that's going to open the door to any qualified person who wants to be a law enforcement officer within the city of Fremont uh, that is perfectly qualified and in otherwise good health should have that opportunity to gain employment with the police department. And I reference myself and Ken Frost, both of us are certified Ohio police officer. Uh, we're certified in the state, and today we would be ineligible uh, to take that test. And Ken might be in better shape than I am. But, um, I both feel that we could uh, do those, we could go do that job today if, if we were able to apply. Um, it doesn't take away the fact that the, um, the testing process, so anybody would still have to go through the written testing process that you would have to go through. You have to qualify. Uh, correct. You would still have to go through a physical fitness test, uh, which is all set up by a civil service commission. And then uh, even after that, you still have to go through a medical physical exam from a doctor's office that writes you off, and then also a psychological evaluation that um, are all of requirements to be gainfully employed as a police officer. Does that age also apply to fire, the fire department? So glad you asked. That was my oh, next comment. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, interesting enough, the next code section, which is 124.42 of Chapter 7, I addresses the fire department. So the fire department age is 40, not 35. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing that reads in the fire statute that we have the authority to change that um, per, our per our ordinance. However, it does in the, the law enforcement police section. So uh, we're not bringing an, or an ordinance to council for fire, just for police. And um, I don't know if there's, I haven't done enough, I'll be honest with you, I didn't get into the weeds of the fire department, just simply because initially I said, I want to do this for police and fire. And then the law director, Mr. Miley, who worked with Ken and myself on this, so guys, hold on, we can for the police, but I don't feel comfortable that we can do this for the fire. So at the advice of the law director, we are going to bring an order simply for police. And we hope that we can expand uh, our pool of law enforcement and become more competitive with other communities. The other thing that we're doing, uh, Mr. Frost brought to my attention today, um, he had spoken to me about it in the past, and I believe he's talked to the auditor about it, um, is uh, we do have uh, four city councils, just so we want you guys to know what's going on. We do have uh, th four, three, right now, I believe, three conditional offers. Yeah. Correct. Right. Actually, there are four, <coughs> three, four so, conditional. So there's four conditional offers, offers out there for employment now with the police department. So um, although we were uh, initially disappointed with the low turnout, which I still am disappointed with the low turnout on the number of people that applied, uh, Ken Frost uh, and the interview team have gone through the process, and um, they feel confident that we have four qualified candidates that interviewed really well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Shari, who was in the room, she was part of the interview team, and uh, Chief Bliss, uh, Sergeant Scully, uh, and then we also brought in uh, the Putin Bay Police Chief, um, uh, an African American man from Putin Bay who was a police chief there. We brought him in to bring an outside person from uh, that also deals with law enforcement and with his background. So he was very advocated to uh, assisting the process. I, process. I did not sit in on the interview. Uh, process, however, so we have four. One of the four uh, are not currently OPATA certified. Okay, so um, what I was going to say a minute ago is Ken uh, asked me today if, if he felt comfortable with, um, I guess, me and uh, myself and the auditor allowing him to um, pay for her police academy uh, to become certified. Um, we've advertised that in the past. Um, on our last test that we would do that um, and uh, we didn't have to do that because we had candidates that were already qualified however this time we had three that were qualified on everything and one that had everything besides the, the police training so um, we're going to be looking to pay for her to go 
to the police academy, and Ken are, Ken's working out the details of that, and that cost is going to be between seven to ten thousand dollars. Now, I will tell you that de the details are not specifically worked out because the questions that I'm going to get asked from you and members of the public is, well, what happens if that person leaves in six months or a year after we pay for them to go to the academy? So those are the same questions that I have, and uh, those details are being worked out between the safety service director and the law director to um, negotiate that. So that's up to Ken and his role as safety service director to work out those details. So I just want you to be aware of what's going on. Uh, that way next week when we bring this to you, we actually had a... Um, this ordinance uh, before you, I should say, let me correct myself. And I asked um, the Civil Service Commission, uh, Ken did on my behalf, I believe, to, uh, they had a meeting yesterday, the day before, to certify the last results of the test. And I asked them to wait until, because we need to hire uh, a total of at least eight people, uh, um, officers to our department. We feel comfortable that we have four right now. Um, however, I wanted to prolong that, the next test until we can get this ordinance in front of council on February 3rd and then have another uh, um, Civil Service Commission sometime shortly after so that way we can announce the next test. I didn't want to announce a test yesterday and then um, with the changes that we're hoping that you will make then it wouldn't apply to that test so then we'd be waiting you know for I don't know next year until we give another test so I'm hoping that if we get this in front of you next on the third um, we are going to ask you to suspend the rules um, because we believe that there is an emergency to that and that we can then have another civil service meeting right after that to schedule the next police test, which has to be um, uh, sent out to public notice under specific time frames. I think that has to be out for at least 30 days, at least, yeah. you know, and then go through that whole process. And by the time you do a psychological evaluation, a mental health evaluation, and you go through the process from the beginning to the when I first offer um, a person employment with the city, there's a three month um, gap before they even start sometimes. You know, uh, by the time you get uniforms ordered and, and all of those things, so yeah. there's there's several months and from um, from the time that uh, you offer a person and they actually start employment, and we need to make sure that we move diligently because we're losing officers to retirement um, unexpectedly, uh, and we lost two officers to other employment opportunities. Um, not for anything bad in the city of Fremont, they just had better opportunities. They, they did a lateral transfer. We had two officers do lateral transfers at Erie County Sheriff's Department. Same wages, same vacation time, but they're working eight to four o'clock. So, and that was unexpected on our end. So it's no lack of planning on our end, it's just the fact that things happen. So um, as the chief's been in here and said numerous times, I mean, you as members of council and, and the administration and the auditor, we've all worked to give the police department the blessing to be able to hire. They just haven't really been able to, to, to find too many candidates. And then the ones that we did, we had some that left for other opportunities already. So it's a competitive the, market. The two officers that left that made a lateral move to Erie County, mm -hmm. had they been with the police department for years? Yeah, you're losing an officer that was once hired a uh, once a sergeant. I'm going to tell you, 2008, they got eight. One was a sergeant, one was a patrolman. So we're losing those officers who are quality good officers. Not that the new ones that we're right. hiring aren't, but you're losing that experience on the street, right? So um, it's tough, but um, I feel like we have great leadership at the police department uh, with uh, Chief Bliss and Captain Conger and um, Sergeant Wetzinger and Sergeant Scully. All of these officers are working directly with Ken and I. Uh, uh, coming up with solutions for the police department. So it's not what Ken and I are just dictating that's happening. We're taking the advice of these officers in the department to work together to fill the void. And, and they, they know that, so they feel appreciated, and they know that we're all trying to do uh, the best we can. So there's no animosity or anything like that. So it's just uh, the timing and how things work out. So that's okay, where I've, we're at. I've got a couple of questions. Do other cities, do they have that age? A lot of them do. Yeah. So um, isn't that discriminatory against age? That's it's. I mean, I guess you could make that argument. I'm not an attorney, but uh, it's it's what's in the ORC. So I'm, I'm glad though that we're going to get rid of this. And then in the fire department, there's pensions. 
I mean, that's the 35. I mean, you take civil service test. I think the idea was you're going to be there for 30 years. You might not have enough years to retire. That's right. You're going to be in there so you get the full pension service. And that was. Exactly. But back then, you know, if you talk to the old guys, you know, like 40 people took the test and they hired, you know, four. Yeah. yeah. You know. Exactly. And now it's like, man, we're just hoping enough, you know, are standing at the end that they'll take the job. And you know so what? Well, Councilman Leibold, as you say that, you're right, to be sitting here as one of the old guys now. I mean, we would go take the test and there would be, they'd hire one job here in the city and you'd have 75 applicants for one job. You know, um, it's just interesting how things have changed. So, Councilwoman Reese, to answer your question, I'm just going to um, try to spin this into about one minute, okay? A sheriff's department can hire whoever they want. Yep. Okay, a sheriff's department can. They don't have to do any testing or anything. They can put the job out and they can hire who they want to be a deputy at the sheriff's department. A village can hire whoever they want. The mayor of Gibsonburg can hire a mayor, or he can hire a police chief. He can put it out for the public and I can apply for it. And if I'm qualified and he wants to hire me, he can hire me. Okay? <laughs> Tiffin is a charter city. They can, the mayor of Tiffin can hire who he wants as a police chief in Tiffin. When I say hire who you want, you just can't, you not, you got to make sure you're doing it the right way. You can't discriminate against people. you got to go through the process. In the city of Fremont, we can't. We're a statutory city, so our police chief isn't selected by the mayor and the safety service director. There's a testing process that has to be done um, that the city safety service director can determine who we hire to give a test, and then ultimately the testing process will determine who the police chief is unless myself and or the safety service director has a reason that we don't want to make that person a police chief and then that can end up in litigation and it can be an issue where I just don't want to hire you know this person as a police chief because I think they're a bad leader I think that they have morale issues and whatever the issue is and then they can file litigation against the city and ultimately it, it would end up in um, a common police court and a judge would rule whether or not the city acted in good faith not to promote that person to a police chief. I hope that we never get there, but I will tell you, if there was somebody that got it that I didn't think deserved it or would do good for the city, I would probably go to court and allow the judge to tell me I had to hire him. Um, represent if you're acting in good faith on the city. But I don't believe we have that situation here in the city. I will tell you I've learned that that's been a situation that's happened in other communities, which is how I've learned what what can and what can't be done is by um, reading a lot of the case law and different precedents that have been set. So I just want you guys to understand the big picture of, of what's going on for transparency with council and the public. I think it is a good idea to end the age thing. If we need people, and in today's world, 35 and is not an In today's world, we are not allowed to discriminate upon age, and that to me would be. Well, and I, I think he's making the white right stuff to do it. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm not asking for a decision. I'm, I really just want to give information to you. But on February 3rd, I will be asking for a decision. Okay. When I eventually you will change the that the age thing at the sure. fire department. I can't oh. tell you that. I don't no. think the law allows us well, that, according to the law director. On the fire, where 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 are we at? 40? Are we at the statutory? Okay. Yeah. So we are at we are at the highest. We we're at the highest. highest on the fire, and we were at the highest we thought we were on the police Correct. until we realized we can do what we want. Correct. Okay. And, and the, 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 Councilman Leibold, with just as with him being an attorney, he probably grasped some of us different than some of us do because he understands the whole. Not that any of us don't. I'm just telling you that the Chapter Seven, which sets the laws for statutory cities, is what we all are. We all have to follow. Okay, on that um, sending of, of police officer in for training, and we pay, and then they decide to leave, and they're only you know when they're only here a short time. Mm -hmm. I know in in offices and companies, you know, like banks, mm -hmm. they ask you to come or they agree to hire you, and they'll give you a bonus of like twenty five thousand dollars. Well, I've, I've heard of people doing that, and they get the bonus, and then they decide they don't want to be there. They have to give the money back. Sure. Yeah. So, so we'll, be, we'll be the same way. Yeah. We're we're Act working like out those details. I just again, this has been a topic that we've that's been talked about publicly. It's been mm -hmm. in the media. We've talked about it. I just am trying to do my due diligence to keep you as council members updated on uh, on the situation that we're dealing with because it's a sensitive issue in the community and people may ask you questions and I just want you to know 
where we're at, that's all. Questions, anybody? Comments? Not the plate, the plate, whatever. Um, the last union contract for the police, didn't we, we change the age on people with experience? Is that? I think you, I think what was <clears throat> on that, you uh, were able to, uh, in that union contract, they were able to get pay based off of their years yes. of service. Okay. Yes, yes, service. Okay. Yeah. I knew we made some sort of change. So that's yes. that. Because otherwise, if you came here with lots of experience, you still had to come in at the yes. lower level. That was that. So we, we made that change. Yeah. Okay. And I know that, um, in fact, that's been done with some of the new officers that have been yes. hired. That the safety service director has started them off at the recognition of the police chief at whatever. Commiserate with where they came from. Correct. Based off of experience. So basically, we could bring an experience with February 3rd that was passed. Let's just say there was a, an employee that worked for, you know, uh, Putin Bay Police Department that had, was age 45, had 12 years experience, and we could essentially bring him over and he wouldn't be uh, losing any benefit. Benefit. That, that he had. So, yeah. Well, I didn't say that. I didn't say that word, but yes. <laughs> And then the word that you, the uh, village of, but well, I don't know what you yeah. said. The, the thing is, what you'll see is, uh, and I see this on social media, um, is the word lateral transfer. And that's a big marketing piece because people are like, I can go here for exactly what I got here. Yeah. Um, we're not allowed to use that word according to the advice that I was given. So, although it's the same but different, like we're trying to get rid of the age mm -hmm. thing, uh, barrier. We're, we're, uh, we're copying people for their years of service that they have worked at other departments. Um, their vacation time will be, uh, uh, it, it, they'll come in based off of their years of service where they're at. So I, I believe by doing this, we make the city more competitive with the sheriff's departments and, and the other. Is there a potential that we would be rehiring retired police officers also? I mean, if they apply. The vacation would not apply to them. Vacation. Yeah, vacation. 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 As soon as you're retired, we're not going to hire them at the years of experience if they're retired to be retired. Right. right. When, when you when you're retired, you you ended everything with right. a pension. Yeah. You and so over. if you come back, mm -hmm. then you start where you're at. Like right. when, when Danny, when when the mayor came in and brought back Ken Myers, mm -hmm. well he had retired, so right. he started at new hire, zero right. level of experience, right. yeah. no vacation. Okay. And started over in the police department, and everything else would be the same same yeah, thing. Right? And our current our current policy addresses that, and this amendment that got passed does not change that. So so you don't now. Okay. I believe it still addresses. Um, no, it, it, the retirement. Yeah, the retirement cleans everything else. Okay. And a part of that too is when you retire, you get paid out. Right. Your vacation and your sick right. and that sort of thing. So we're not going to pay you for it and then bring you right, right back, back in and get it back to you. You didn't, right. you know, mm -hmm. so right. so that it wipes the slate clean. Yeah. Okay. That could be that could happen though because I think like the uh, well, I don't think I know the old uh, the the previous system was you could get out at 48 years old, right? 25 and 48. So <clears throat> I guess you could have an officer who's still OPATA certified apply to be a police officer at 48 years old. Um, who would be may be qualified to right. take the job that's already been retired? Um, so, uh, but I will tell you, most guys that did law enforcement for that long don't want to go back yeah, and be no. a street cop. <laughs> no, most of them. Supply and demand just an odd thing sometimes. Uh -huh. so. But you never know. Yeah. You yeah. never know. Yeah. It's like most teachers don't go back to class. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, not full time. <laughs> that's why I asked that question. Cause right. In the teaching world, there is. Same kind of concept. I would hire and hire. It doesn't happen very often. So, but there is the need for it. Well, I'll tell you this. Occasionally, the gentleman that we offered a position to has accepted a position from the water treatment plant. Okay. Um, is retired from the city of Bowling Green of 29 years, and we are hiring him back to be the superintendent of the water treatment plant. He's currently in Lorraine, and and he's been there for two years. So he retired, went to Lorraine, started over, and has two years vacation in Lorraine. Because of the ordinance that you just passed, he can start here at the city with two years of seniority on vacation, what the hell have for vacation. Now, 
Uh, that is almost a deal breaker for him to come in with no vacation time. Yeah, because at that age, um, uh, and uh, he uh, he wants he wants to be able to have some time off, but I believe he even has to sit out a, a wait a year to use correct, it. Correct, right? right? So he still has to wait. So he's going to start here probably this week tomorrow, and um, he still can't use vacation time for one year. So with this ordinance that you just passed, you still have to wait one year to use your vacation. So it'll be next year he'll accumulate vacation based off of three years rather than one year. So he'll get two weeks instead of one week, I believe. That that's what the policy says. Where does he live? Bowling Green. And who's driving Delorean? Mm -hmm. He's driving Delorean. So he's that very excited to start here. Good. So, um, and he'll be here to meet all of you uh, at the next council meeting. Good. So, um, so uh, Councilman, under your question, isn't it mm -hmm. out of bounds? I mean, no. literally, that's just what happened in the right. different position. Okay. Thank you. And then last, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> tomorrow, I have um, a new staff member named Elena Hasselbach, who will be uh, replacing Amanda Sears. Um, so if you call up to City Hall, Elena may be answering the phone. Elena is coming to the City of Fremont from the County Recorder's Office. And she has been working with uh, Colin Carmack for two or three years. Um, and this ordinance will also help her because she will not, she will have to wait a year for vacation, but next year she'll have four years of service towards her vacation instead of one year. And um, as a mother of two young ones, I'm sure she is going to be thrilled with the fact that she knows that she's going to get that vacation time next year. So, um, but those are both of those folks were people that. Um, we're waiting, not waiting for this, but waiting for this. If that makes sense. Yeah. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything else? Excuse me. Okay. Did, did you have any other comments? Okay, then you go on. I'd make a motion that we excuse uh, President Jamie Halford for tonight. And, uh, and Denny Addy. Nice I thought we would do it separately. We could do both. We could President Jamie Hattie, Jamie Atwood, and Council Member Denny Addy. Let's take them. All in favor? Aye. Yep, two roll call. Roll call. Yeah, roll call. Roll call. Yes. Please. Yes. Elder? Yes. Reese? Yes. My vote? Yes. Sleep. Yes. One thing, Madam President, in the future, I would probably do them individually. Just in case there's one that you want to vote for and there's one that you don't, <laughs> um, I would not. I would. I would just caution. Like I, I, I probably would have done them individually, just just in case down the road, if if you've got somebody that is having a bit more of an issue with attendance than others, then council might have a different opinion. I, I'd like to make a make a comment regarding this issue as I was not here at the December meeting with this. Oh yeah, and we didn't discuss doing them. So we didn't. We didn't really anticipate multiple. I feel this. I feel them. this law is asking for, for nothing but problems. I feel we have good attendance at City Council, and I am not in favor of. of I think we could look into changing this situation. We can't change anything, Justin. You gotta. You can talk to. Yeah, talk to. Talk to, talk to the state legislature. <laughs> it's, been the, it's been in the revised code. Well, why haven't we? Why haven't we? We've never. I, we've never. We don't know. Yeah, we don't know. It's, it's, it's a seventy. It's a seventy-year-old law. <laughs> <ball. laughs> <It's laughs> I, I just think. Ball. I just think it sets us up. This, right now, we're, we're everybody's doing good things. What's the stop? Well, Councilman, such and such, we don't want to. You still got to frustrate four out of the seven, obviously. That's, that's yeah. right. Yeah. You know, you, you, you still the motion. Yeah. Still yeah. I would say we can always amend the motion if someone. I mean, if someone moves to, if someone say, moves to excuse two people, and I don't want to excuse one of them, I'll move to. There you them. But I don't know if we have to. Is the council president coming to that ordinance? I. Um, I was trying to. I was trying director, to find the statute. I think she. The law director and I. Um, talked about it. well I emailed out to council and, right. and, and Jim responded because it just says member of council and she's an elected I mean she's not a voting member of council <clears> unless there's a tie but but I would constitute that she's still a member council. Would it cover Ms. No, 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 she's, she's not elected. She's an employee. She's not. I'm always on point. An appointed. Your excuse. Yeah, see, I would, I mean, this is a league, I mean, count, you elect council president but we're members of legislative authority. 
I don't know. I'd have to look at the actual. I was trying to find the text again to see what it says. I was thinking that that question. Yeah, I'd rather. It's a simple I get motion. It. I I'd rather it. cover ourselves rather than get. See, you I, know, I agree with you. I would rather do it individually. I'm just opposed. And see no need to do it. That's my personal. I'm opposed to lots of laws that come out of Columbus. But I, I wasn't alive in the time. But we have The difference is we haven't done that. So I go, we, it would be Representative Quick that could change this. Or the state senator. The state or, senator or, or state referendum. The I don't know. We got, we got about three options. <laughs> or if it's unconstitutional mm -hmm. some way, we could go to Supreme Court. <laughs> On that note, Madam. Yes, but could I, I have a motion? Adjourn. I will second. It has been motioned by Mr. Elder to adjourn and seconded by Ms. Sweets. Please. Yes. Elder? Yes. 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 Yes.